and welcome back to our conversation on COVID-19 and communities of color. As we talk about the vaccine, we also want to talk about the misinformation that is out there, including a lot of conspiracy theories going around. Dr. Limon, what are you hearing about this now? Um, I think there are multiple things. So I think um, part of the concern is the speed of the clinical trials. And I think that um, there are many things that we can learn from that. So it was a randomized large, both of them from Moderna and Pfizer, um, controlled clinical trials. I think another um, concern is, you know, false material in them, which is incorrect. And Dr. Henderson mentioned a few of the others. Yes, and Dr. Henderson, let's get the facts. What is this vaccine? It used to be in the day, they would put a little piece of the, whatever the virus was and your body would build immunity. But this is a whole different system now. Yes, correct. This vaccine is called the messenger RNA. It's been out since the 1990s and it's been tested previously in HIV and Zika virus. So this is a genetic um, code that's um, injected into your muscle cells it, it instructs your cells to produce the spike protein. So it doesn't go into the nucleus of the cell, so it doesn't change your DNA. So once it produced the spike protein, the body developed antibodies to the spike protein, and that's how it protects, and that's how you develop your immunity. So it doesn't change your DNA, it's not a live virus, and it's a safe vaccine. And how many of you were able to get the vaccine? Show of hands so far. As doctors, you should all have it. Okay. <laughs> so, Dr. Livingston, tell me a little bit about the side effects. Did you experience any? So, I received uh, a full course. Obviously, Pfizer, you received dose, uh, your first dose, and then uh, 21 days later, and uh, 28 days for Moderna. And I did not receive any side effects. I had a sore arm, but it's important to tell uh, the population that about 11% of people will experience things like fever. That's very normal. Actually, the more side effects you have, and most people will have more side effects after the second dose because your immune system is familiar, it's recognized it. But many people will have uh, a, a, what we call a boost. And that's a good thing. That's that's indicating that your body is responding to the vaccine and you're producing a, a, a good amount of antibodies. So you do want to feel a little icky afterward. That's a good thing. Exactly. So Dr. Hamlin, the vaccines we now have required two shots. Explain the importance of making sure you get that second vaccine. So as Dr. Uh, has already been stated that, you know, the first dose you're getting, uh, you're initially being able to recognize that spike protein. The second dose is when you're really boot mounting a larger immune response. And so for like any other medication, you wanna have the complete course. We do know that there's significant immunity that happens after the first dose, but you will get up to 95% immunity uh, or 95% decreased chance of being hospitalized or severely ill from COVID if you were to contract it after getting both doses of the two available vaccines. And that's a pretty good effective rate. I think the flu actually has less, the flu vaccine. So you're getting a pretty good uh, boost for your immune system when you're getting the vaccines. And what about these variants, Dr. Henderson, we're hearing? Anything latest and newest talking about these current vaccines covering those variants? Yes, um, as of now, the coronavirus vaccine, the Moderna and Pfizer, both are fairly protective against the variants. Um, but that is the concern is that the more that patients become infected, the more viruses will replicate. So the longer that we wait to get the vaccine, the more chance of these variants to develop because more virus will replicate. But as of now, the vaccines that we do have are protective against the variants. I know there's always been a question about if you have COVID, you already had it, should you still get the vaccine? Which doctor would like to address that? It's Dr. Livingston. I'll, I'll address that. So the CDC recommends that you wait 90 days after you have been infected uh, to receive the vaccine, uh, just to give your immune system time to rest. And another question, we have two OBGYNs with us. If you are pregnant and you have COVID and you're, you have the possibility of getting COVID-19 vaccine, what is the recommendation currently? Let's go with Dr. Hamblin. Yeah, so the current recommendation is that pregnant women should not be excluded, meaning pregnant women should be able to get vaccine if they want to. Any 
same time, there's a shared decision-making model. And so part of this decision-making is with your doctor of what's your risk of getting COVID versus uh, your concerns about the vaccine. Pregnant women were not included in the trials. However, many of the women who were involved in the study became pregnant during the course of the, of the study. So we have seen no untoward effects of the COVID vaccination um, for pregnant women. And Dr. Livingston, even more important for African-American women who have a high maternal and infant mortality rates. Black women are four times more likely to die inside of pregnancy. And so we strongly, we being the American College of OBGYNs and the uh, board certified physicians here, strongly recommend that women get the coronavirus vaccine primarily because if you are pregnant and you get COVID, you're more likely to experience severe, severe illness. If you are pregnant, and you get COVID and you end up in the hospital, you're more likely to end up in the ICU, the intensive care unit. And unfortunately, if you're pregnant with COVID and you're in the ICU, in, in the intensive care unit, you're actually more likely to end up on a respirator. So the, the, there's strong recommendation to prevent illness, mitigate uh, factors and get the vaccine. And quickly, Dr. Liebman, we only have a little bit of time, but for younger people, like 20s, 30s, to get the vaccine, the importance of that? Very important, and that's one of the reasons, like I mentioned, that the, those eligible for Phase 1A have expanded, so it now includes BMIs above 30, smokers, and importantly, it's not just because you're protecting yourself, but because you're protecting those around you. Okay, thank you. We'll be right back with more information.